How to catch Daphnia water fleas for your aquarium fish, the most healthy food for a lot of fish species. This is an ideal pond because it has no fish and fish can eat the water fleas as well. So no fish means a lot of water fleas if you are lucky enough. Here I found such a nice pond and that's a dream of many aquarists to see these red clouds of Daphnia in the water. I carefully scoop the Daphnia out without taking too much mud from the bottom of the pond. And here you can see about a pond of Daphnia magna, nice red big Daphnia and uh, as said that is an aquarist dream. And there's a lot of other ponds. How to find a pond? Ah, this is one with fish, with carps. And you see a dead carp on the surface. That's also an alarm bell. And um, you might bring in some fish diseases or carp lice into your aquarium. Yeah, so take care. This is how you normally in deeper water catch water fleas in big waters. Turn the net around like an eight, an eight shape, and then the water fleas drift towards your net. And um, here I have some brown green water fleas that is maybe Daphnia pulex, a smaller species, but as good. This is a smaller pond without fish again. And here I catch um, a lot of zooplankton, cyclops, daphnia, some other creatures, uh, mainly between the water plants. And I get a lot of dirt and water plants as well, because on them there might be very tiny creatures for my smallest cherry bars. So here I make a mistake. I have the catch in a bucket and I simply take them out with a small net and put it in the aquarium. What do I do? I introduce some predators as well. So this looks nice. A lot of creatures for my juvenile cherry barbs. You can see the cyclops hopping around. But here there is a larvae of a damsel fly. That is bad news because he can eat tiny fish quite easily. This is a larvae of a true dragonfly and he can eat even bigger fish and the next one can also do that very well this is a aquatic beetle larvae so look at the jaws also he can catch quite big fish so what can you do about these big predators you can sieve the whole catch and what is in the sieve you can feed if you want yeah, to your main aquarium and the adult fish will uh, take care of all these predators. You might as well throw it away or you might freeze it and then everything is dead as well. And then what came through the sieve is only smaller creatures and that you can safely feed to smaller fish. As said, you can also freeze the catch. And here there's dragonfly larvae. I'm so sorry. He is not a threat anymore. This is another weird creature that is a mini anemone. It is a hydra and he is a danger for your very smallest fish, fish that just hatched out of the egg. Um, if you have predators in your tank, you need to clean the tank so that you can control every corner of the tank and you need to remove all the predators. For Hydra, you might uh, put the whole catch in a bucket. The Hydra will attach to the sides of the bucket. Then you uh, throw the whole water in another bucket and then the Hydra is mainly gone, still in the first bucket. So take care uh, what you throw away and what not. So check in all the buckets if there's still little fish or not. Here there is Daphnia pulex. I had quite a lot here. So I took a little lid and I put it in the freezer so I can uh, feed it uh, for the days after when I had no time to go to the pond. Here I had a lot 
kilos of Daphnia Magna, sometimes you are that lucky, and I put it in a big container that is not so very handy for thawing it up, because you need to thaw up only a little bit. Um, so this is much better to make thin plates with uh, a centimeter of Daphnia in kitchen foil, for example. Put it then in a big, big, big freezer. I'm lucky enough to uh, be able. This is in the zoo where I work. And um, this is very, very handy because you can easily break off a piece of Daphnia as much as you need for your aquarium. And uh, now I show you a quality test. So these are the Daphnia that I caught a couple of days before and they are frozen once and this is the first time that they are thawed. Yeah? So um, you can see the Daphnia are still whole in one piece and the water is clear, all the Daphnia sunk to the bottom. Compare that to Daphnia that you can buy in an aquarium shop. Do that test at home. I have here five blocks, put it also in a glass of water, throw it up and then you can see that many Daphnia are broken, they are at the surface and the water is not so clear anymore. You can do that also with dried mosquito larvae or a frozen mosquito larvae, tubifex or artemia, whatever. During all the transport um, they are defrozen quite a lot of times. Here you can see perfect Daphnia in one piece and your fish will love it. Also guppies and platys that um, actually are mainly plant eaters, algae eaters, but also they, they love it of course. Yeah, here uh, another bigger piece and you can see all the fish is coming towards me. You need to take care uh, not Every owner of a pond is happy that you come there with your net. You might introduce a fish in their carp breeding pond, like koi herb virus or whatever. And um, better to ask permission beforehand. The Daphnia that sinks to the bottom is eaten by Corridoras or other bottom dwellers or algae eaters like Ancestors or so. Yeah, so. Um, Having your own Daphnia for your fish is really treating them well. Here's some cherry barbs, and in this tank are cherry barbs that have just hatched. And um, I showed you that pond in the beginning, and um, maybe water fleas and cyclops are too big already. And then I put some hay in aquarium water or in tap water. And that water becomes cloudy within one, two days, and then it becomes clear again. And then it is full with monocellular zooplankton. So you can put some of the um, catch out of that, that first uh, uh, pond. Uh, look out on the plant. There is the tail of a damselfly larvae. Yeah? I, I didn't see it. So this is a mistake. But uh, you can put uh, some sieved water uh, out of a pond in there and you can put some of that hay water in there. And this is how I managed to breed 68 cherry barbs. In the end you will see a link to that video. In the middle there is a juvenile cherry barb and they grew pretty quickly. The whole breeding took me three months using live food. Here a cherry bob in slow motion. Yeah, three, two, one, zero, minus one, and gone is the cyclops. Even in slow motion, he is quick. Yeah, so um, have fun catching water fleas. You are in the nature and can enjoy it. It is cheap and it is the best you can do for your aquarium fish. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next Zoo Wild YouTube. Don't forget to click on the Cherry Bob video. Okay, bye bye.